In 2019, the discovery of a new and thankfully extinct supervolcano that left a caldera twice the size of Yellowstone was made off the coast of the Philippines. Jenny Ann Barreto, a marine geologist, and her team found a caldera from an ancient explosive eruption that once occurred in the depths of the Philippine Sea, with it measuring a staggering 150 kilometers or 93 miles in diameter, making it the world's largest caldera. But how destructive would this eruption have been? And would a volcanic eruption at this scale be more or less deadlier compared to one that occurred on dry land? Which, as we all know, creates some intense and pretty harrowing effects to lands near and far from them when they occur. Because of its position, with this eruption and the subsequent caldera collapse, did mega tsunamis or tsunamis in general get triggered? We're going to answer all of these questions and more as we take a look into the life and eventual death of the now extinct Apalaki supervolcano. The Apalaki caldera is located in an area that's referred to as a large igneous province. A large igneous province, or LIP, are massive areas of relatively short but seemingly non-stop volcanic eruptions that are fueled by a hotspot, meaning some kind of mantle plume is occurring here which essentially translates to the occurrence of an upwelling of an abnormal amount of magma that's rising on mass from the mantle. These processes are unrelated to typical tectonic related volcanism and are still an area where more study is needed to ascertain the actual hows and whys behind their existence. But even though they're odd and we lack understanding of them, they're actually quite common and there's many of them all around the globe. So what we had here was some kind of abnormality in terms of the voluminous amount of magma that formed the Benham Rise. But fuel it, it did. And this area saw its first eruptions begin around 48 million years ago, before finally calling it quits around 26 million years ago. There's been a multi-phase volcanic history in the life of the Apalaki Volcanic Complex. Hotspot volcanism more or less gushes forth basaltic magma from the mantle in a spectacular fashion. So the first eruptions here were non-explosive. The release of a huge amount of basaltic lava occurred on the deep ocean floor, creating pillow lavas and eventually, over many millions of years, it would build up the height of the Benham Rise. But in general, the study has split the history of this volcanic complex into three stages. The shield building phase, which we just mentioned with the non-stop flow of basaltic lava, followed by the caldera formation and post-caldera late stage volcanism. It's important to mention that at its birth, the Benham Rise began at a depth of 5.2 kilometers, or 3.2 miles, in the deep ocean floor. Subsequent basaltic eruptions built the rise up by 2.7 kilometers, or 1.6 miles, over the course of about 6 million years, leaving it submerged by about 2.5 kilometers, or 1.5 miles, at its crest. So, in the course of about 6 million years, the eruptions turned from effusive to much more explosive and the present-day massive caldera occurred at some point before 41.3 to 41.5 million years ago. Bathymetric data revealed it's a complex structure, with multiple collapse events that occurred here, with many ring faults aiding the collapse, meaning these eruptions got so intense that it fractured the surrounding land to the point of forming their own faults. We've seen this occur in a supervolcano in Australia. Actually, there's multiple ring dike fault systems formed by the many supervolcanic eruptions that occurred here, and the majority of them were entirely separate volcanic bodies. But in the Apalaki caldera, it's clear that volcanic activity continued time and time again, because in its final stages, after the last major collapse occurred, we see little resurgent domes and post-caldera activity, before the magma here finally went cold and solidified, as the system here shut down for good. So what happened here? Why did the eruptions suddenly get so explosive? Well, there was about 2.5 kilometers or 1.6 miles worth of what could essentially be deemed a volcanic cap sitting above the points where the magma first flowed, meaning magma got trapped inside the ground for longer, leading to more melt occurring and aiding in any potential chemistry changes. Another surprising news is that these types of supervolcanic eruptions that occur deep in the ocean would actually do very little to affect our surface dwellers. It completely destroyed the surrounding ecosystem temporarily due to the volatiles that this eruption would release, but because of how deep it actually is, it's very unlikely that it'd do any real damage beyond this. Don't get me wrong, if a supervolcanic eruption and subsequent caldera collapse occurred in a shallow sea, then the damage would be very, very bad and tsunamis of a terrifying size would accompany it. 
as history has shown us time and time again. But the eruptions that form them are always magnitudes below the type of eruption we are discussing here, which is one at a supervolcanic scale. But the deep sea completely messes around with things, especially the ash cloud. So fallout, nuclear winters, all of that scary stuff really shouldn't and probably wouldn't happen here. And neither would a massive tsunami. There'd be some displacement of water during the caldera collapse, but it's unlikely it'd be anything too bad in all honesty. And the area of displacement is largely confined. So thankfully, the largest caldera on our planet occurred deep, deep below the ocean. But rest in peace to all the fishes that were unlucky enough to be caught up in it. Now just because this supervolcano popped off deep below the sea doesn't mean there wasn't hell here. Pyroclastic flows still occurred, lava flows still raged post caldera collapse and this area would have been a terrifying place to be chilling when this guy threw a fit. But he burped his last volcanic bomb about 26 million years ago. And now all that remains is this truly incredible freak sized caldera. The fishes can now rest easy. Thanks for watching.